Thank you. God bless you. You may be seated. It is a wonderful privilege uh, to be here again tonight. And uh, I told Bishop Henson a while ago, I said, let me tell you, there's not a whole lot of churches left like this. I'm just going to be honest with you. And so all I'm going to say is don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. What a tremendous, tremendous spirit of the Lord. And I know there's been a lot of honor given here tonight. Uh, but I also want to say this. I, I appreciate all of you as uh, the pillars of the church. Wow, that got me. I started looking at my concordance uh, about pillars he that overcometh will I make a pillar in the house of my God. Someday we're all going to be pillars. But I want to say out of the depths of my heart what a privilege it is to be here on this 91st anniversary of such an awesome church. We have been blessed just to be here. My wife and I both. Uh, say the same thing. What a blessing it was to be here this morning. And then tonight, the presence of the Lord is, is here in such a marvelous way. And I want to also again say to the pastor of this church, uh, Brother and Sister McGee, uh, how wonderful and how gracious they are. This church is blessed with a pastor and his wife. That not only do the work, but they just, they just do whatever has to be done. And they get it done with excellence. And uh, the reason for that, of course, is Bishop and First Lady, Queen Mother. No, first, that's right, Queen Mother. You know, when you've got a Queen Mother, then you have a Lady, Lady uh, Jerusha, right? Lady McGee. It was Lady Di years ago. Queen Mother, Lady Di. We got Lady McGee now. So this is a royal family, and uh, we're all a part of God's royal family, but I want to give, again, my deepest respect to your bishop, and uh, he has been a friend to me. And when I say that, I mean that. Uh, I couldn't tell you all the times he's encouraged me. I couldn't tell you all the times that he's put up with me. I couldn't tell you all the times that he's had to forgive me, <laughs> but I love and I appreciate Bishop Henson, uh, and it's so good to have, of course, our district superintendent. Somebody said he was an encourager. He never discourages anybody. Well, he discouraged me many times. <laughs> I'd see his name on my phone, and I thought, oh, my goodness, now what? Brother Trammell? We need something. We need help. Guess what happened? I don't even want to know, Kevin Lehman. <laughs> but you know, he'd always end up encouraging me. I'm, I'm just messing around. But I do appreciate Brother Lehman, and I am very happy that he is doing such a great job as our district superintendent of the Michigan District <laughs> of the United Pentecostal Church. And his lovely wife, our First Lady, it is a wonderful thing. David said, I have been young. And now I am old. Now, I'm not going to quote that exactly. I'm going to say this. I have been young, but now I'm older. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Never. Not one time. Are his seed begging for bread. Hallelujah. There was one guy... I heard that he was begging on the street, and he says, visions of a cheeseburger. Now, if I was going to beg, I'd raise my visions a little higher than that. Why don't you say visions of a job or something, you know? But uh, I've never had to beg. Now, there have been times I may have wanted bread and needed finances, but I never begged for them, right? Never begging for bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you ever been hungry? 
Well, I know that Jesus, I know he'll feed you. Have you ever really needed help? And somehow you felt like he just didn't need you. Have you ever seen someone who was down and out? Look like Jesus didn't care about. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed out begging for bread. Have you ever been hungry? Well, I know, I know, I know that Jesus, he'll feed you. Have you ever really needed help? And somehow you felt like he just didn't need you. Have you ever seen someone who was down and out look like Jesus? didn't care about I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed out begging for bread you may be down today but help is on the way dark clouds may cover your sky but he'll answer you by and by. Oh, if you will take one step, he'll take two. It's amazing what the Lord can do. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed out begging for bread. You may be down today, but help is all. Dark clouds may cover your sky, but he'll answer you by and by. Well, if he blessed you once, he'll bless you twice. Been living on his blessing all of my life, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed out begging for bread. Did you ever put your trust again? In a friend or a brother, the Lord will be much closer to you than your father or your mother. Oh, he'll help you when you're in need. He'll even help you to succeed. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed out begging for bread. You may be down today. But help is on the way. Dark clouds may cover your sky. But he'll answer you by and by. Oh, if he blessed you once, he'll bless you twice. Been living on his blessings all of my life. Never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed out begging for bread. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands and praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you will stand with me tonight, I'm reading from the Word of the Lord. And I, I want to say that the compliment that Bishop gave me uh, this morning and tonight, he said, that was right on time. That was right on point. And I know when he says that, he means that. And so I hope tonight that this will be the same. My wife, some time back, called a lady in our church, and he, she gave her a scripture to encourage her. And the lady called back, and she was crying. And she said, oh, Sister Trammell, I hope this is not the scripture that I was supposed to receive. The Lord said, I will turn my back on you. And I will forsake you. 
She said, Sister Wellman, I am so sorry. That was the wrong scripture. <laughs> I meant to encourage you. And so I hope I have the right message tonight. But if not, well, then go ahead and give me one for this morning. And, but I do feel like I have a word from the Lord. I was preaching years ago for Brother J.C. Cole. Brother J.C. Cole is Brother Billy Cole's father. And uh, Brother Cole was getting these, uh, well, I guess really obscene phone calls. And you'd have to know Brother J.C. Cole to really appreciate this story. But uh, if you know Billy Cole, some of you remember Brother Billy Cole, they had quite, per quite the personalities. And um, one day the phone rang and Brother Cole picked the phone up and there was a long pause. And Brother Cole had had enough of these calls, and he said, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. May your tongue rot out of your mouth. And about the time he got done saying that, the lady, oh, Brother Cole, please, I just call for prayer. <laughs> I am so sorry, sister, but I have been getting these bad phone calls, and I thought that was one of them. No, I just need prayer. <laughs> so I hope tonight that what I have for you will be a blessing to you and will strengthen you. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now notice what he did. He put a question mark where God had already put a period. And the devil is a master at that. Questioning when God has already made a statement. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat, eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, the lust of the eyes, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. There it all is, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's all right there, and you know that. She took of it and gave it to her husband and gave also to her husband, and he did eat, and the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons, and they heard the voice of, the God, of God, of the Lord God, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Verse 9, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, Where art thou? How many know and believe that God knew where he was? God knew where he was. He wanted Adam to know where he was. Verse 15, this is a great promise. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, Genesis 3.15 is a great promise. Everybody say a great promise. In fact, it's as far as I'm concerned, the first, and it is, the first messianic promise in the Bible. There's coming a seed that's going to bruise the head of Satan. Stay with me just for a moment here. Genesis 4 and 1. 
And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And then we read that 8, verse 8, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up and slew Abel, his brother, uh, and slew him, rose up against Abel and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? What an attitude to speak back to God like that. Verse 25 of that verse. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God said, she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew, and, and to Seth to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Very simple thought tonight. Simple subject. I want to speak to you on this. There is no telling what God will do. There is no telling. Turn around to somebody and say, there's no telling what God will do for you. I want to say it like this. There is no telling what God will do for this church. There's no telling. There's no telling. You may be seated. You've heard that cliche used many times. Sometimes we speak about a certain person, and somebody says, well, they said this, and you say, well, there's no telling what he said. Can I get a witness? Uh, I, I'm glad Brother Lehman's here so I can pick on him, but that's exactly the way I can feel about Brother Lehman. I mean, somebody said he did this or said that or, you know, played this joke on. I said, you know, there's no telling what he said. And I say that in a good Christian way, Brother Lehman. There is no telling what God will do, and let me add it to this, for you and for me and for all of us in this building. The story of creation, I read a few different verses tonight because I want to refer back to some of them, and this is not going to be a long sermon. Everybody said, thank you, Jesus. I understand we have corn dogs after service tonight. <laughs> we, we may even have a corn dog throwing contest. <laughs> See how many we can throw to Brother Lehman. <laughs> See how many he can eat. There is no telling what God will do. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Somebody said, well, I don't know if I believe the Word of God. Well, if you don't believe those first few words, you will have a hard time. But if you will believe the first four or five words, in the beginning, God. Then there's Nothing else you can read that you would say, I don't believe that could happen because it all starts with a mighty God. It all starts with the Creator. One of my favorite scriptures is this, Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard the everlasting God? The Creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not. Neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There is no telling what God will do. So God not only created the worlds, 
But he even created the stars by adding this little addendum, and he created the stars also. <laughs> My God, you talk about a, you've got to talk about a great God. He just, he just said, all right, I've done all this, and now I'm just going to throw the stars up there like diamonds against black velvet. And he did that also. I'm glad he's an also God. Aren't you glad he's an also God? He helped me, and he can help you also. He strengthened you, and he can strengthen me also. There's nothing too hard for our God. His strength is not limited. His power is not decreased. His love is wonderful. His greatness is mighty. Somebody ought to lift your hands right now and say, I thank God. But what God has done in this church in 91 years, of course, God created man. The Bible says, in his own image created he them, male and female. I know people have said this, but I still say it. I'm glad he didn't make Adam and Steve. He made Adam and Eve. And we still believe there are, there's not 132 different genders. There's only two, male and female. God made it that way. There is no gender dysphoria with God. I just happen to thank God for that. I'm glad I, I'm glad I got my Eve. But you know, and I'm not going to bear, bear long. I could go a little longer than this. But I, you know, what happened was is that they were created. You know that. They were created. The first, everybody said the first man. And the first woman. And the first man and the first woman lived in beautiful innocence in the Garden of Eden. I personally believe they had like glorified bodies. They were living in the presence of God, covered by light, the light of the glorious God. And there they were in that beautiful place of innocence and, and perfection. And, and there God allowed the serpent to come into the garden. And you know the story. I read it to you. And, and, and he said, thou shalt not eat of the tree. And, and they said, thou shalt not. And the serpent said, no, you can eat of the tree. And he turned God's word around. The Bible said Eve was deceived and then Adam was deceived, and when God walked into the garden, he said, Adam, where art thou? What hast thou done? And Adam blamed Eve. Adam said, the woman you gave me. Boy, that sounds kind of familiar. And Eve blamed the serpent. The serpent beguiled me. And the serpent didn't have a leg to stand on. The first woman, the first man. Then, of course, they fell, was moved out of the Garden of Eden. And the Bible says that they conceived and bare two sons. First Cain and then Abel. Cain was a tiller of the ground and Abel was a keeper of the sheep. They were born after the fall. I wonder what would have happened if it would have happened before the fall and they would have had children that were totally regenerated by the power of God. Well, it didn't happen that way. There were two. And you know the story how that Cain rose up and slew his brother Abel. And in one day... I. I I want you to think about this. Can you imagine the sorrow and the pain that Adam and Eve went through? And one day, they lost Abel, but they really lost two. Because the Bible says Cain was driven out from the presence of God. It would, like be, it would be like today that God forbid one of your children killed the other one, and the other went to jail for life, and... The other one was dead. They really lost two sons in one day. And after that fall, I want you to think about a minute the results of the fall. Here's Cain. I mean, here's Adam. And here's Eve. And the news was crushing. 
They had no parents to talk to. They had no counselors to reach out to. There was no mother-in-law. There was no father-in-law. There was no church. There was no pastor. There was no family at all. You talk about depression. You talk about crying. You talk about weeping. You talk about feeling low and wondering what in the world are we going to do? We've lost. We've lost so much. Think about where we were. We were in the Garden of Eden. We were blessed by God. We heard the voice of God. And now, nothing. Everything is gone. Everything is, is in a terrible, terrible, you talk about a mess. They were in a terrible mess. But God had given a promise. And I really believe that Eve never forgot that promise. He said to her, he said, the seed of the woman is going to bruise the head of the serpent. And no doubt she wondered, well, how can this be? I have nobody. I have no Abel. I have no Cain. I have no seed. It, it, it looks like that that it, there's, no, there's no way that this is going to work. And, and I think she probably said, this is not how the story is supposed to end. Can I preach to somebody here tonight? I don't care where you are right now. I don't care what kind of situation you're going through right now. I don't care what kind of problem is in your family right now. I don't care what kind of dysfunctional family you're in tonight or what kind of news you just heard about your family and about your friend and about the situation that's going on in your life. I got a word for you today. There is no telling. Come on, somebody say it. There is no telling what God will do. I don't know about you, but I've lived, some, I've lived some unhappy days in my life. Come on. Let's be honest about it. I've lived some days of depression in my life. I've lived some days of fear in my life. I've lived some days of guilt in my life. Would you help me preach a little bit? Don't let me feel like I'm the only one. I've lived some days when I didn't know if I was going to live to see another day. Not because I was on a hospital bed dying, but because I felt such a weight of, uh, of sin and of uh, whatever the darkness of, of life that everybody, uh, Job said, the days of darkness are going to be many. See, you can, you can still be blessed and be unhappy. You can be blessed and be going through something. The Bible says Hannah was sad. She went to the house of God and she was sad. And the word of the Lord finally came to her. And here's what it said. And her face was no more sad. Job spent some very unhappy days. Wow, if you went through the story of Job, and you all know it, so I'm not going to go through it, but he lost his children, he lost his family. He, the only thing he had left was his wife. Thank God for a good wife. But she even said, Job, you're in such a bad mess, just curse God and get it over with. And he even said, you know what, I wish that I had not been born. But I've got news for you tonight. There is no telling what God will do. I always get a little nervous about people that say, I always know what God's going to do. <laughs> people say, you know what, I can tell you that God, I know how God works and I know how God, oh, no, you don't. I don't care who you are, God will surprise you many, many times in your life. You think you've got it all figured out, even in your darkest hour. You look and say, well, it's, nothing's going to happen, but I'm going to tell you tonight. I've got a word for somebody tonight. There are no, listen to me, there are no dead ends in faith. Yeah. 
When you've come to the end of your road, it's probably just a bend in your road. When you've come to your last, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Let me tell you, God is saying to somebody, there is no telling what I'm going to do in your life. There are many of us tonight that we, we bear in our body the marks of a struggle. We bear in our spirit the marks of a struggle. Paul said, I had a thorn in the flesh. But let me give you a little secret. If you've got a thorn in the flesh, and most of us have, don't let the thorn in your flesh become a thorn in your spirit. Don't ever let the thorn in your flesh become a thorn in your spirit. No matter what you have to do, don't get bitter. No matter what you got to go through, don't get all out of shape and say, I'm just going to give up and quit, and, I, and they don't love me anyway. That is a lie of the devil. I tell you that God is a God of starting things over for his children. Jeremiah 18, the Lord said to Jeremiah, I said, I want you to go down to the potter's house. And I want you to watch him as he makes a work on the wheel. And the Bible says that the vessel he made was marred in the hands of the potter. That is a beautiful scripture, in the hands of the potter. As long as you're in his hands, as long as you stay in his hands, uh, young people, whoever you are, if you've made a mistake, don't quit coming to church. For God's sake, don't quit coming to church. If you stumble, don't give up. Now it's time to it's time to get back up. Don't quit now. Because there's no telling what God will do. There's a scripture that's always intrigued me in. Uh, it's in 1 Samuel chapter, uh, I believe it's 1 Samuel chapter 14. I don't know if I gave you that scripture, uh, if I did, 14 and 6. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, Come and let us go over into the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us. Everybody say, it may be that God will work for us. And there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or to save by few. Don't start looking around at what you got or what you think you don't have. Because when you do that, that's when the eye of faith quits seeing. Forget about what you got. Forget about what you don't have. And remember one thing. Just say it like this. There is no telling what God is going to do in my life. That's what this church is all about. If I listen correctly to the choir tonight, I heard some of them say, I'm glad I'm back in the house of God. I've been back in the house of God for five years. I've been back in the house of God for 16 years. That told me something. Somebody had a little stumble. Somebody failed. But somebody says, I'm going back. I'm going back to Father's house. I'm going back to the church. When the prodigal son came back home, I'm glad they hadn't built a Walmart there. Or it hadn't turned into some kind of charismatic church. There's people that want to come back home, folks. Thank God there's an apostolic church in South Flint that still believes there is only one God. And his name is Jesus. You still believe that worship is the way to get things done. You still believe there's only one way into the kingdom, and that is to repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. I think there's some fattened, fattened calves around here waiting on some prodigals. Fattened. If you fatten a calf, there's a reason why that calf was fattened. I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about calves right now, okay? I know some of you are laughing. It was a fattened calf. There was a purpose he was feeding that calf. My son's coming home. 
my son's coming home. Somebody say, my, somebody, some of you right now, you've got children that need to be brought back into the kingdom. Say it, my son's coming home. My son's coming home. My children are coming back. That's it. That's what the church is all about. It was battered and scarred. And the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin. So he held it up with a smile. What I'm offered, good folks, he cried. Who will start the bidding? One dollar. Only one? Two dollars. Going once, going three dollars, going once, going twice, gone, cried he. But no. From the room far back stepped an old gray-haired man, a pillar of the church, walked up and dusted the dust from the old violin and tightened the loosened strings, began to play a melody as soft and sweet as the caroling angels sing. And the auctioneer said, and now what I'm offered. And somebody said, one thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. But what? What, what change is worth? And quick came the reply, the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with life out of tune is auctioned cheap to the thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin. He's going once. He's going twice. He's going. He's almost gone. But then the master comes. The master comes. And the foolish crowd cannot ever understand the worth of a soul and the change that's wrought by the touch of the master's hand. There is no telling what God's going to do in this church. There is no telling. You talk about a dysfunctional family. You talk about a struggling people. Adam and Eve had struggled, and it could have been. I don't know. Brother uh, uh, Bishop Henson He's a theologian, and he can straighten this out if he wants to when I leave. But in chapter 5, it says, this is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man in his likeness, made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called, and called their name Adam in the day they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son after his own likeness, and his name was Seth. Everybody say 130 years. Now, this is a part I'm not sure about. I don't know when Cain and Abel were born, but I have a feeling it wasn't long after the fall. I think in about 24 months that all happened. Maybe not. But a hundred and something years later. Everybody say a hundred years. Maybe it was only a hundred years. A hundred years later, a hundred years of sorrow, a hundred years of wondering, oh, my God, a hundred years of wonder. Maybe it was 91 years. A hundred years, 91 years of wondering, my God, are you, oh, oh, is that ever going to come to pass? How could this happen now that all of a sudden a third son is born? And his name is Seth. And he had a son whose name was Enos. And then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Wow. Can I tell you something right now? Somebody here needs to hear what I'm telling you right now. What you think is the worst thing that's ever happened in your life, God is saying, I'm getting ready to do something like you've never seen me do before. There are three, over 3,000 promises in the Word of God. And every one of those promises are true. And when God gave Eve that promise, the seed of the woman is going to bruise the head of the serpent. When she had Cain, she thought, well, this is it. I've gotten a man from the Lord. But when Seth was born, that was the bloodline of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you read in Luke Chapter number 3 and verse number 23, and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, as was supposed the son of Joseph, which is the son of Heli. Now, I'm not going to read them all. 
Verse 31, which was the son of Melia, which was the son of Menan, which was the son of Matthi, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David, which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz, which was the son of Salmon, which was the son of Nason. And now, verse 37, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Malaleel, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth. Which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. There is no telling what God will do. No telling. What you see as the most awful, tragic moment and time of your life, God is preparing right now a birth of something brand new that's going to bring back the glory of God in your life. It might even be a failure. I'm talking to somebody on the Internet right now. It might even be a failure, but God isn't done with you yet. Your ministry is not over yet. You think I'm not going to be able to make it any further, but I've got a word for you tonight. God is not done with you yet. There is no telling what God is going to do. Jesus Christ came through a family of strugglers. We heard a great word Friday night. Jesus Christ came through a struggling family that thought it was over. But if I read the word of God correctly, Abraham got up again. David got up again. And on and on. And could I have somebody that would be honest enough to stand up and say right now, I got up again. I got up again. There is no weapon formed against you that's going to prosper. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. No weapon has ever defeated this church. Oh, they've tried. The enemy's forged weapons to defeat this church. He has thought about it. He's tried every angle. He's worked at it. He's tried. He's done a lot of damage sometimes, but he's never defeated this church. Because there is no telling. I want you to stand with me tonight because I feel like that you need to say this to somebody around you again. There is no telling. Say it again what God is going to do in your life. Turn around to somebody else and say, there's no telling. There's no telling what God is going to do in this church in the next two years. I don't know about you, but I see myself walking in the doors of your new church just to walk in there and sit down. It's getting ready to happen, folks. There's a miracle on the way, and there's no telling how it's going to happen, but it will happen. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And I feel like shouting about it right now. It will happen. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house right now. There's faith moving up and down these aisles right now. And that faith is a faith to give you a faith to believe that nothing is going to be impossible. Hmm. Nothing. <laughs> He 
Have not I told you that I will be with you? I've come to remind you again tonight, thus saith the Lord, that I am your God. I will be with you. Do not doubt my words. Do not look in any other direction, but look to me. For I am the creator of the ends of the earth, and I will help you. And I will give you new strength. And I will bless you with my favor because I have said it and you can mark on it that I will do what I said that I would do, saith the Lord. I think we ought to just thank God for what he's going to do. There is no telling what God will do if you believe. There is no telling what God will do if you believe. I tried God and I know heal my body. Save my soul. There is no telling what God will do if you believe. Now somebody, somebody here tonight needs to believe that right now. How many remember when He filled you with the Holy Ghost the first time? When you were baptized in Jesus' name. And right now, maybe you're going through the trial of your life. But whatever you're going through, I want you to come to the front of this church. And I want you to say, God, I'm going to believe this preacher tonight. That there is no telling what, God, you're going to do in my life because I'm going to believe your word. Oh, yes, there is no telling. What God will do if you believe. Yes, there is no telling what God will do if you believe. Well, I tried God and I know He healed my body, saved my soul. What God will do if you believe. There is no telling what God will do if you believe. Hallelujah. There is no telling what God will do if you believe. He'll heal your body. Save your soul, baptize you with the Holy Ghost. There is no telling what God will do if you believe. Lay your hand on somebody and pray right now. In the name of Jesus, God, I believe there's faith in this house for the greatest revival. For the greatest in gathering, for the greatest revival this church has ever seen. I want you to thank him and praise him right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. and reach out to the Lord tonight. doesn't matter what the situation is. God is more than able. 
He's more than able. Let's everybody lift our hands and just begin to worship the Lord and thank the Lord. And if you have an issue in your life of something that you don't know what to do, why don't you put it in the Lord's hands right now? Put it in the Lord's hands right now. Say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you're able to take care of it. Hallelujah. That's right, church. Come on. That's right. Let's worship. Let's worship God. It's altar service time. It's time to connect with God. Let's do that right now. Yes, 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 yes. If you've got the Holy Ghost, I want you to lift your hands and let the Holy Ghost flow through you right now. Pray in other tongues right now. Pray in other tongues right now. Let the Holy Ghost pray through you right now. Yes, 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 yes. There's a blessing here. There's a prayer to be answered here tonight. That's it. Come on, church. Come on. Come on, intercessors. There's a breakthrough for somebody tonight. There's a deliverance for somebody. There's an answer to somebody's prayer here tonight. Glory, 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 glory. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, 